So let's tap in and check in and see how DeSantis is handling what's going on down in Florida with the migrant issue. Growing fears of a mass migration because of the crisis in Haiti. Authorities are on edge from South Florida to Washington, D.C. The State Department and Pentagon are on alert and keeping a close eye on what's happening on the ground in Haiti. And Governor Ron DeSantis is taking action to make sure Florida is prepared for a possible mass migration. Let's get right out now to Local 10's Glenna Milberg, live in Miami's Little Haiti neighborhood with our top story at 6. Glenna. Calvin, Nicole, just let me start with this. There is no, by all accounts, no evidence right now of a pending mass exodus from Haiti. But there is certainly plenty of history for that. And with all of the focus right now on the border and border security, state plans that are already in place are getting beefed up. Even as the international community gets behind a new Haiti-led transition plan to end the gang uprising. Choose a new prime minister, an interim prime minister, to establish a national security council, and to put in place an electoral commission. The warlords, technically now with the power, are announcing they will not participate. And Florida is preparing for a potential influx of desperate people. With this letter today, the governor added 133 state guards, men and women, and this list of state personnel, air and water support, mostly to the Keys, to an ongoing migrant. Keys. 133 Florida state guards, 39 FDLE officers, 23 FFW and 8 sir. Like, does anybody else feel like we're thinning ourselves out? We're spreading ourselves thin, better way to put it. Does anybody else feel that way? We got to pay attention to what's going on with Russia and Ukraine, everything else, the southern border. Like, it's it's, it's becoming a lot right now. We're, it seems like we're getting hit from all angles. Personnel, air and water support, mostly to, the National Guard. to an ongoing migrant interception plan. There's no evidence of it right now. People cannot leave their, their house, they, you know, there's no public transportation. There is no current intel of an exodus, but there is decades of history of it. Most recently, the 15,000 Haitians that surged the southern border in the months after the assassination of then President Jovenel Moise. A potential migrant crisis adding to current political tensions over border security. What are we doing to prepare for that wave and to ensure that these people are not paroled into the United States as the administration has done with people on the southern border. At this congressional hearing Tuesday, Florida Congressman Matt Gates launched challenges to the Department of Defense and the general of Doral Bay Southern Command to call in the U.S. Navy to back the Coast Guard. They have not requested that specifically from Southcom, and so, but if there's a need for that, I would absolutely request it. Important to note, the Biden administration has been and still is deporting Haitian nationals that come by any other than legal means. Now there is a growing call for that to stop. South Florida is preparing for a potential influx of migrants from Haiti who are fleeing the violence there that has been occurring for the last year or so. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis announced that an additional 250 officers and troops will be deployed to Florida's southern coast. This comes as a group of Americans, including best-selling author Mitch Album, were airlifted out of Haiti in a private rescue mission that was spearheaded by two congressmen. Christian Benavides is at the border of Haiti and the Dominican Republic, where some people are trying to get out. Uh, so, Christian, I saw your report yesterday for the evening news. Um, what's happening there today? Uh, has the uh, influx of folks trying to get into the Dominican Republic slowed, or is it increasing? Vlad, good morning. What we know is that people are constantly trying to get in. But what's happening today is quite interesting. You may see a large flow of Haitians uh, that are walking right behind me. What's happening is that there is a market that lives here on the border and three times a week, People from Haiti are able to come in and shop at the market. We're told that on Monday, mm. 38 thousand people from Haiti came just to shop at the market, do some commerce there. So that's what's currently happening. What is not typical is that women and children are being put on one side and men are being put on another side. They have to go through a separate screening. 
And we're told that this has been happening ever since the prison break that sparked what's currently taking place. In How do they keep a track on who's coming in to make sure they go back out? How are they doing that? I don't even see there is any possible way to do that. And you know these people are seeking refuge because they don't want to go back to Haiti. I was just in the Dominican Republic in February, it was. February. And they were talking about this. So seeing it right now with my own eyes, I'm like, yo, how are they able to keep track? Haiti. That is fascinating. Um, a lot of different elements to talk to you about. Uh, can, can we talk about this mission to, that successfully evacuated some Americans, including that author? How did that play out? Right, the author said it looked uh, straight, it looked like it was straight out of a movie. Now, this was coordinated along with uh, Congress members that were able to facilitate the transfer. But just to give you a sense, he describes that the helicopter came in in the middle of the night and the blades were still running. And he says that at that point, the people that were in the helicopter said, everyone run in, run in, run in. These are folks that were volunteers for the orphanage that he has there in uh, Port-au-Prince, but they were right in the middle of where all this chaos is playing out. And I think what's important to note is that people who live in Port-au-Prince are unable to leave their homes. They're unable mm. to leave their neighborhoods. And what we've been, people have been describing to us is that they can't even leave to go get food. It's, it's the sort of thing where they have to talk to neighbors, ask if they have any more food, any more fuel, and just sort of share with each other. Yeah. Back to the rescue mission. The helicopter is there. He says it looks like it's straight out of a movie. Everyone gets into the helicopter. It's about 10 people, and then uh, they fly out. He couldn't give us too many details about where they went to next because they wanted to sort of, these sort of private rescues are now starting to happen, and the details are not, uh, are not really out there for publication just because they want to keep it in a way where these are not nobody interferes with these type of private transfers but i mean this is someone who uh, had the connections and had the means to be able to do this you got to think about the people that live in port-au-prince where 80 percent of the capital city is controlled by gangs and there's no way out and when i say no way out it means no way out of your neighborhood, no way out of your home, or you're pushed out of your home when the gangs take over your home. So truly a, a dire situation there. Yeah, um, and we should point out, and Christian, you have done this uh, as well, which is that uh, the violence is, for the most part, concentrated in the capital city of Port-au-Prince. The people- now See, this is everybody's concern right now with the migrant issue going on here. They're in these, let's take New York City, for example. They're trying to seek refuge, right? And they're put in these places and then they're removed out of these places and then they get mad and then you're seeing people turn up missing, dead, whatever. And they're, they're just starting to go around and wreak havoc. That's what you're starting to see. People who live outside of Port-au-Prince uh, in the rest of the country, even where you are at the border, uh, it looks relatively calm in your live shot behind you, um, which is typical uh, of uh, the area that uh, borders uh, the DR and, and Haiti. Um, but, Christian, there's something else that's happening, and I wonder, and you may not have any reporting on this because you are uh, unable to get into the country. No one's able to get into Haiti. But uh, there's this meeting that's happening uh, with these Caribbean countries, uh, with representatives of the United States. But what a lot of people are wondering is, where are the representatives from Haiti that are able to decide their own fate? It exactly. is still, even in the situation that Haiti is in today, it's still a sovereign country, and the notion of a bunch of other countries deciding who should either replace Ariel Henry or what the future of Haiti should be strikes a lot of people as... I mean, I don't think... Ariel Henry was in Puerto Rico when this group was gathering what? initially in Jamaica, so yeah. he wasn't even there for that. He wasn't that. even there for that. And you're, I was wondering the very same thing that you're asking right, right now. Sorry, uh, Christian. No, it's okay. What I was going to say is, you know, another point of contention here is that ultimately... Prime Minister Ariel Henry says that he has to sign off on whoever is going to be part of, of this council. There are unconfirmed reports that the council has already been uh, formed. But ultimately, if it's Ariel Henry who is signing off on it, how are the people of Haiti going to feel about that? And will that uh, really lead to some sort of substantial change, which is what's needed in Port-au-Prince? The, the people of, of Haiti have a lot of hope in 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 that okay 
things, I, I spoke to somebody, uh, he is a minister, and, and he lives He lives in Capetian, so he is not in, in Port-au-Prince, but what he said is, you know, we, we have this hope that things could potentially change, because this is the worst, according to his words, the worst that I've ever seen it, uh, the way that things have unfolded uh, to this point. So there is the hope there, but it, it's just... It, it, when you hear about other countries making the decision mm -hmm. for the people of Haiti, just something doesn't sit right, particularly with those who, um, the Haitians that we've spoken to here. Yeah. Uh, Christian Benavides, thank you so much, Christian. All right, buckle up. Fox News alert. Deputies and Coast Guard apprehending 24 Haitian migrants found aboard a fishing boat off the Florida coast. And at the southern border, there's new concern about gangs. As we learn, the brother of the suspect accused of killing Lake and Riley has ties to a notorious Venezuelan street gang. Griff Jenkins is live in Eagle Pass, Texas with the details for us. Griff? Good morning, guys. There's an undeniable spring surge at our border. In the past five days, we've had more than 7,000 migrants at the southern border being encountered. Five days, 35,000. That's more than the population of Eagle Pass proper. Let's start in Melbourne, Florida. It's Sebastian Inlet. That video, body cam video you were showing, this is officials as they apprehended 24 Haitian migrants that came in on this fishing boat. What was the oh. telltale sign for authorities? No fishing poles on that boat. Two smugglers were arrested. There's concerns with the unrest in Haiti that we will see a lot more boats just like this. Now, let's go 2,500 miles all the way to the other coast, Hakumba, California, where we have seen the thousands of migrants. I brought it to you live as they came across, many of them clean, shaven, nice clothes, rolling a rolling bag. Something was up. Well, we're now learning from a report out of the Daily Mail that Chinese smugglers on the Mexican side are working with Mexican cartels. Mm. They're being called snakeheads that help these Chinese get all the way across in places like San Diego County where they're seeing a 500% increase in those Chinese migrants. Now, let's end in Athens, Georgia. The tragic story of Lake and Riley, who should not have died because of Jose Ibarra, the Venezuelan illegally in the country. We're learning more about his brother, Diego Ibarra, who was arrested on the same day for presenting a fake green card now authorities believe he may have ties to the notorious Venezuelan gang known as Trend de Aragua they were all linked to that NYPD cop beating incident you will remember that we have shown many times on the air this gang Trend de Aragua which translates roughly to train of Aragua Aragua is one of the largest states in Venezuela that transnational gang was born out of the Tocaron prison which is the most dangerous notorious prison in Venezuela that raising a lot of concerns guys we'll send it back to you yeah I also heard the brother when he was at the Texas border bit one of the border guards shouldn't that have been a sign that maybe we should turn this guy around with his neck tattoo yeah that's a great point Brian in that case there were two Did you just say he bit one of the one of the cards like bro I feel like we are living in a dream right now with everything that's going on and you're just sitting there watching it on your TV hoping and praying it doesn't get any worse than what it is like, especially if you live in some of these cities where the borders and things are happening at these borders, like you are sitting there praying that it doesn't get worse. You go in your house and you try to batten down the hatchet and, and protect your family. You don't even want to go nowhere. Migrants. The other migrant was arrested. Diego Ibarra was not, but they're looking back at him, trying to trace every affiliation he had. The concern here is that, much like we have seen MS-13 become a problem in the United States, they're worried this new Venezuelan gang, Trinde Aragua, or TDA, mm -hmm. as they're sometimes called, may try to establish themselves in the U.S. And look at the examples we've got right. in New York City beating the cops, and now this tie in Athens, Georgia. It looks like a pattern that authorities are worried they could be trying to establish themselves here. All right. Griff, thank you very much. I guess who's upset front. by it? Other gangs. Yeah. Yeah. Evidently, the Bloods, Crips, whatever gangs, I'm not up to date on the latest uh, in gang growth, uh, but they are taking on the Venezuelan gangs who want their territory. That's, that's exactly What's going right. on here? Well, it's Maybe. out of control, and to, we got to give credit to Ron DeSantis, because what you saw right. with these Haitian migrants, and th those same agents, Fish and Wildlife, have been right. at the Texas border, training with Texas DPS on how to deal with this stuff. He was the head 
ahead of the curve. Not only right. did they send National Guard there. And they luckily caught that boat. Only suspicious thing they saw, here we have a boat with no fishing poles on it. Maybe we need to check this out. That's how they caught that one. Like, it, it, imagine how many they didn't catch. But he sent his guy so they can be aware of what's happening in their state when they're traveling by boat. And, and you know, with those images from uh, that uh, Griff just showed from Florida with the body cam. So on last Saturday night, Kathy and I, I told you about this, Kathy and I had dinner with our friends, uh, Fred and Jackie Wacker of Chicago in Hope Sound. So we're driving home on the beach road and uh, there's a bunch of cop cars straight ahead. We thought it was a DUI uh, checkpoint. It was not. Uh, and then we drove a little further. There were like 50 police cars, uh, Martin County Sheriff, police, all sorts of things. Turns out there was a fishing boat that came ashore at uh, Coral Cove Park there on Jupiter Island, and eight Haitians and uh, Dominicans jumped out, apparently wearing life preservers, ran into the, uh, into the brush, started hiding. Uh, they caught three of them immediately, and then all night long they looked for the other five. They eventually got them, but Kathy and I were talking about how Jeez. the difference is between how they handle these migrants coming mm -hmm. into the country in Florida versus in Texas, Arizona, California. You hear those stories Mexico. when you go down to Florida. We were on like a little island down there. Yeah. Um, at the tip of Florida, and they said all the time all they the see time the boats now. come up on the beach and they have to call the authorities. Move on next here tonight to the new state law that now allows squatters to be thrown out of homes that don't belong to them. Governor Ron DeSantis signed the bill this afternoon in Orlando, and our Capitol reporter Forrest Saunders joins us now live from Tallahassee to tell us how all this will work. Forrest. Well, guys, I can tell you this. This was not a very controversial policy. In fact, it was unanimously approved by the legislature earlier this year during the legislative session. And now, with Governor Ron DeSantis' signature, Florida becomes one of the first states in the nation to lean in on this issue. With rental homes, second homes, and so many others, Florida is no stranger to squatters. In fact, just this week, Martin County Sheriff made national headlines warning of a viral video teaching squatters how to squat and circumvent the laws. Crime is a lot like cancer. It spreads. And if you see it somewhere else, let's be on guard. Let's get ahead of it. When someone I think that video kind of made other people like, let's get it in gear. I think that video going viral, I still have yet to watch it, but I've seen it come through my timeline. And I just was like, I'm not watching this mess, man. People are crazy. But I think that video is going to be the reason why a lot of these other states get in line and fall in line quickly. I hear Georgia is pretty much, you know what I mean, going through the motions now to get something passed. When is illegally occupying a vacant property, current rules require what can be a lengthy civil court battle to remove them. All right, so here we go. <laughs> Wednesday, Florida's governor signed a new law to streamline that removal process. Providing very swift remedies because what the squatters know is even when they're in the wrong, it's a massive process many times yep. before they can be evicted. Uh, and a lot of times the process is very expensive. Property owners will now be able to. And I heard the other day a lot of these squatters know how to file like appeals to stretch the time even longer. West law enforcement immediately remove a squatter if they entered illegally. They've been told to leave and haven't, and as long as they're not involved in a tenant-landlord legal dispute. The new law also increases penalties. A second-degree felony if squatters cause more than $1,000 in damage, and a first-degree felony for knowingly advertising a fake home sale or rental. My name is Justin Mel Carrick, and I'm just one of the neighbors that had to deal with squatters invading our street. The change is a big win for Floridians like Justin, who warned Wednesday just how bad things can get. The squatters brought reckless driving, drugs, weapons, and verbal threats to the lives of my neighbors. The new law also getting rave reviews from Florida's largest professional trade association, Florida Realtors. Vice President Andy Gonzalez said, the Sunshine State now has a deterrent to halt the horror stories. If you own a property, uh, even if you're away for a period of time, uh, you shouldn't have to go through legal loopholes if there is someone squatting in your house. The next step is for the changes to take effect. Florida's anti-squatting law now coming online in July of this year.
Okay, so let's talk about something more controversial, which is the vacation rentals bill, which got through the legislature earlier this session. That is a policy that would basically give the state more control over how to regulate vacation properties over cities and counties. And it's getting some blowback from the Florida Realtors Association in particular, who are urging Governor Ron DeSantis to veto that policy, saying that it actually diminishes property owner rights. We'll have to see what he does there, Paul. All right, Forrest, also today, Disney and DeSantis settling a years long fight over Disney's opposition to the parental rights bill, critics labeling the don't say gay law. Uh, what was behind the timing of this settlement today? Well, we know that uh, the company as well as the new oversight board have kind of been working together to try and find a amicable way to settle their dispute, at least in the state court battle. And it sounds like they have. I mean, you have the governor out there today saying that, you know, this is a big victory for him, his comms team really uh, touting that message. But there are some provisions in there for the company as well, including negotiating with the new board that's overseeing the special district uh, for their future plans, how they would cooperate and work together. And if they come to a good agreement uh, with that new deal, uh, it essentially would also nullify the federal court case, which is still sort of in limbo. You might remember uh, Disney is alleging that uh, their First Amendment rights were violated by Governor DeSantis as well as the legislature. That, uh, that lawsuit is on hold right now. There was a dismissal on the, uh, the, the lowest level of the federal courts, and now the D Disney is, is appealing that decision. But they say they will dismiss that case. They will drop that appeal if they're able to get a good negotiation out of the company uh, with the new board going forward. So we're going to have to wait and see on that as well. But obviously, this is a step in the right direction, uh, at least for both parties, uh, as far as they're concerned. Yeah, Paul. It's been a journey for us. Thank you. Forrest Saunders live for us from Tallahassee tonight.